I declare every interfering demon coming against your progress must bow in Jesus' name. I decree every interfering demon that has come to hamper, to hinder, to hinder, to impede your progress must bow now in the name of Jesus. An enemy exposed is an enemy defeated, and we will not tolerate interfering demons one more day. We will not put up with these interfering assignments of demon powers who come to steal, kill, and destroy for one more moment. We will not stand by and watch. We will not sit down and complain. We will not lie down and give up just because there's some static in the spirit, just because there's some demons who are trying to suspend our breakthrough. We will rise up and fight. We will go forth today with a new determination to overcome everything that's coming against us. These interfering demons must get out of the way. Every interfering spirit coming against your success, I take authority over it now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you must flee from us. You must go far from us. You must back up and back off. We command you to do it in the name of Jesus. We command you to go far from us in the name of Jesus. We command it in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. And this is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. I want to remind you that today's broadcast is brought to you by the brand new, number one, best-selling book, The End Times Watchmen. I want you to pick up your copy and make sure on Amazon and make sure that you send in your receipt at jenniferleclair.org slash end times watchman. Mike Bickle wrote the forward. If you are an intercessor, you need to read this. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to read this. It's going to lay out end times paradigms and teach you how to watch and pray, not just for the signs of the times, but also to deliver warnings, to navigate your end times dreams, apocalyptic visions. This is the book to have in this hour as we watch the signs of the times rapidly accelerating all around us. A massive earthquake in Afghanistan. What did Jesus say? There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. The signs of the times are accelerating all around us. It's imperative for your own sake that you learn to watch and pray. Check it out. It's on Audible. It's on Kindle. It's on Amazon. Get it today. The end times watchman. Guys, why don't you come on in? Let me know where you're coming in from. What city, what nation? Hello, Dover, Delaware, Aventura, Florida. God bless you. St. Paul, Minnesota. God bless you. Remember the mid-year prophetic update is on Saturday. JenniferLeClaire.org slash events. Make sure you get signed up for that. It will not be streamed anywhere except my private server. Amen. Come on in, guys. Hello, Indiana, Melbourne, Australia. God is good in Massachusetts, West Virginia. Good morning, Canada, South Africa, Germany, Turkey. We need an awakening prayer hub in Turkey. Really interested in seeing an awakening prayer hub rise up in Turkey. Maybe you are the one or you know the one. Awakeningprayerhubs.com. That is a prayer movement. And we are contending for revival and awakening in the nations. Guys, we're going to start the official broadcast in just a couple of minutes. We're just getting settled. Begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to press into his presence. Begin to shake off every distraction because we're going to start here in just a couple of minutes. We're going to do a roll in. This becomes a podcast. It's called Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. You can find that podcast wherever you listen to podcasts online. Also check out the brand new podcast, the Prayer Warriors podcast. It's there for you. We've got a new episode coming up today about the, the dance between intercession and worship. It's a tremendous teaching and you're going to want to get in on that, the Prayer Warriors podcast and tomorrow Praying the News podcast coming out with a new episode. Make sure you're tracking with my podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts 
online. God is good. Keep coming in. Keep sharing. Share this on your timeline. Share it via Twitter. Share it via Messenger. Share it anywhere and everywhere. We're going to kick this up into high gear today. The devil is a liar and so is his mother-in-law. Amen. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We're going to go for it. I'm going to read today from Mornings with the Holy Spirit. Hello, hello, hello out there in Trinity, Texas. God bless you. Hello, Phyllis. God bless you. You're such a blessing. Hello, Luz in Mexico. God bless you. Malaysia. Hallelujah. South Africa. We're going to read from Mornings with the Holy Spirit. And that was my first devotional. These are prophetic words. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and I'm releasing them to you. You're going to be encouraged today. You're going to be inspired today. I'm going to fight for you today. Amen. God is fighting for you all the time. He's good. He's got this. Come on. God's got this. God's got this. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to begin to just pray and uh, just uh, just adore him and worship him because he is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of all the honor. He is worthy of our allegiance. He is the worthy one. And as we do that, we might run into a word of knowledge. We might run into a prophetic word. We never know what the Holy, Holy Spirit is going to do on this broadcast. So we're going to keep on pressing. Amen. Together. And then we're going to get into... We're going to get into our theme for today in the later part of the broadcast. Good morning, Australia. Good morning with great expectation. Good morning, Tian. Good morning, Arizona. Good morning. God's got this. He's got it. Whatever you're going through, he's got it. 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 <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. He's got it. 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 Jesus. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. So share this quickly, guys, so we can get started. We're going to get into this interfering spirit side. We're going to deal with all these hindering demons, the interfering demons. We're going to deal with these devils that want to impede your progress, that want to intrude upon your life. We're going to deal with that today. God's got it. He's with us. So come on in, guys. We are one minute away from the kickoff. Just one minute. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Get ready to go higher. Stay on one accord, and we'll get somewhere today we've not gone before. God's going to encourage you. He's going to inspire you. He's going to help you. He's going to teach you. He's your everything. Amen. If it's your first time, say first time. If you've shared, say I'm ready. And we are going to kick this off in 30 seconds. God is good. Let's bring in Clubhouse and TikTok and Instagram. And good morning, first timers. Good morning, first timers. <clears throat> God is good all the time. Jesus, let's do this. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. This is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. Let me just prophesy to you something good is going to happen to you today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the brand new number one best-selling book, The End Times Watchman, the prophetic intercessor's guide to watching and praying through the last days. The signs of the times are all around us. You cannot ignore it and you need to be equipped to navigate what's going to happen in the earth, not just for yourself, but for others. Gosh, my goodness, God is going to begin to open our eyes in a magnificent way and show us things to come, give us strategies for navigating difficult times, the famines, the pestilences, all those things that Jesus prophesied. Pick up your copy on Amazon. It's on Audible. I read the book myself. You can get it on Kindle. Get it today. Send your boat, send your receipt in at jenniferleclair.org slash end times watchman so you can get all these bonuses that I've prepared specifically for you. Guys, I'm coming to you live today from South Florida. 
our church, Awakening House of Prayer, is here. And I'm there on Sundays preaching, praying, prophesying, and casting out devils. Our heart is to equip you to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. I'm teaching three different messages every single Sunday. You've got three opportunities to encounter God and His Word. Come on over, South Florida, at 1047 a.m. If you're visiting, we're waiting for you. I've saved a seat for you. You can plan your visit at awakeninghouseofprayer.com. If you're not in the region, you can still join us. It's not quite the same, but it's a rich word. It's a great presence. Ahop.online. You can watch online. Register free at ahop.online. Choose to become a official web church member. Go deeper with us. Get my teaching archives, the virtual life group, virtual prayer line, virtual pastoral advice, virtual healing and prophecy rooms. There's options for you over there to become official. Tap in at whatever level you want to at ahop.online slash web church. That second service and the third service is School of the Spirit at AHOP. We're going into the deeper things of God. 1.30 p.m. South Florida, Escaping the Great End Times Deception. I'll be teaching about false teachers on Sunday. Then at one at 4 p.m. is School of Prophecy or School of Prayer, School of Deliverance, School of the Seers. Come on, how many seers do I have over there? You need to get equipped. And School of Prophecy. What is it? School of Prophecy, School of Seers, School of Prayer, School of Deliverance. School of Spiritual Warfare. It's all over there for you at schoolofthespirit.tv. Guys, we're going to read today from Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. And today's devotion <clears throat> is titled, Give Thanks Always. Give Thanks Always. When? Always. Where? Always. Give Thanks Always. And here's what I heard the Lord say. When you're tempted to complain, Find something to thank us for instead. Complaining is a temptation the enemy brings. But remember that the power of life and death <clears throat> is in your tongue. When you complain, you are speaking death over a thing. Instead of voicing your dissatisfaction, thank me for the wisdom to overcome what's frustrating you, to solve the problems that face you, to confront the enemy with the sword of the spirit, or to walk away from a situation and let me handle it. The Lord says your praise empowers you to focus on receiving my wisdom and speaking life, even to those things that smell of death. Your praise empowers you to focus on receiving what God has for you. Did you catch that? Speak life. Speak thanks. Be grateful. It'll shift the atmosphere in your life. The scripture references are in the devotional. Pick up your copy of Mornings with the Holy Spirit, wherever you buy books online. But here's the prayer starter. Help me maintain a grateful heart in the midst of frustrating circumstances, trials, and enemy attacks, and bad days. I will no longer complain, but I will lift my voice in praise and thanksgiving to the one who gives me strength and wisdom to overcome. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, I thank you this morning that you are, you just are. You are the great I am. There is no other God like you. You are the God who sits high above the circle of the earth, looking down upon us with a smile. You are the God who created all things. You created a new song. You're singing songs of deliverance over our lives, and we praise you. We thank you. We honor you today because you are magnanimous. You are so generous. You are our provider and you're not a stingy God. You're a liberal God. You don't just barely get us by. You give us more than enough because you are more than enough. So we celebrate your generosity today, God. We celebrate your faithfulness today, God. We celebrate everything you are, everything you've done, all of your great and precious promises. They are yes and they are amen. And we come into agreement with the ruler of rulers. We come into agreement with the Lord of lords, with the King of kings. We bow a knee to you. You are the one true living God, the undefeatable God, the God who is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. You'll watch over your word to perform it in our lives and you are faithful. You are faithful. None of your words ever fall to the ground. You're faithful. 
You're faithful. If you said you're going to do it, you're going to do it. You're the God who follows through. You follow through. You follow through. You see the end from the beginning. You declare the end from the beginning. You know every obstacle we're going to face on our journey. And you've already planned a way of escape. You've already planned a way around it, a way over it, a way under it, a way through it. You might not deliver us from every trial, but you'll deliver us through through the trial. You'll lead us and guide us through the waters. You'll lead us and guide us through the fire to the other side where we are purified. We're shining like gold, burning and shining like John the Baptist with the testimony. We thank you, Lord, today that you have given us your name, your word, your blood, and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and our selflessness. So today, God, we choose to die to self again. Just like Paul said, I die daily. We choose this day to serve you with our whole heart. We choose this day to submit ourselves to you. We choose this day to watch our mouth. If we can't praise you, let our tongue cleave to the roof of our mouth today. God, we want to do your will. We want to do things your way. We want to follow your leadership in every area of our life. So help us, Lord, to put aside childish things. Help us, Lord, to put away those things that just uh, hinder our forward moving progress. Help us, Lord, today to be willing to go deeper with you, further with you than we've ever gone before. Help us, Lord, today to abandon ourselves in your love because you are faithful. You are love. You are ready and able to deliver us from our past and propel us into our future. You've got a future and a hope for us. You promised us that you do, so you do. We believe that you do whatever we're walking through now, the sickness, the disease, the pain, the suffering. You've got a future and a hope for us, and we're banking on it. We're believing on it. We're standing on it even now. We can't see it. We don't know what it looks like. We don't feel it. We can't even sense it, but we believe it because we're walking by faith and not by sight. We believe your word because you are the ruler of the universe. Everything is at your disposal. If you don't have something that we need, you'll make it for us. <laughs> You are still Elohim. You are still creator God. You are still the ruler. You are still the master. You are still the God who swooped in and saved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. What else would you not do for us? So help us, Lord, today to put our faith in you. Help us, Lord, today to put our faith firmly in you, to stop trying to do things in our own strength that only you can accomplish. Help us, Lord, to stop trying to make things happen. Help us, Lord, today to stop getting in your way, interfering with your process for our progress. Would you help us, Lord, today to be a people who is willing to wait on you to do the work in us? so that you can move through us with authority, move through us in power, move through us with strength and might, God. We want to be vessels of honor in your kingdom. We want to be vessels of honor, vessels of honor, vessels of honor. We want to be trustworthy. We want you to look at us and say, yes, I can trust that one. I can send them into the darkest places. I can uh, propel them uh, in forward with a gospel in their mouth and they'll be faithful. They'll be obedient. They'll be ready in season and out of season. God, we want you to use us. We want you to help us to see what we haven't seen. Lord, give us a revelation of your love today. I feel so much interference on this broadcast and there's no uh, surprise there since we're about to deal with interfering demons, since we're progressing toward the point of the broadcast where every interfering spirit has to stop and flee. So don't let the enemy distract your heart right now because I see the assignment and the agenda of the wicked one. He wants some of you to jump off the broadcast before 
we get to the part where we deal with the interfering spirits that are holding back your success. He wants some of you to say, I don't need all this die to self prayer. I don't need all this. Oh God, let me do your will prayer. You know what? You do need that. And I need that. And the enemy doesn't want us to pray these prayers because the enemy knows when we pray these prayers, we become more like Jesus. And when we become more like Jesus, we become more powerful than we are now. We become more authoritative than we are now. We become more faithful than we are now. We become more steady than we are now. We become more joyful and peaceful than we are now. So I bind every spirit that is trying to sway your heart away from the word of God in Jesus name. I bind every spirit that's trying to distract you and trying to cause you to just sort of do your little housework until I get to the good part. I break those demonic lies coming against your mind, trying to steal, kill, and destroy your breakthrough today in Jesus' name. Father, we're so grateful that you expose the enemy. We're so grateful that you see all things and that you know all things. We're so grateful, and yet we don't have a clue how much we need you. We don't have a clue how pitiful we are without you. We don't have a clue. We quote the scripture, apart from Christ, we can do nothing, but we don't really believe it because we keep trying to do things in our own strength. We keep trying to do things our own way. We keep trying to do things in our own timing because it seems good to us. Scripture says many are the plans in a man's mind, but the Lord directs the steps. The Lord establishes his will. The Lord will ultimately have his way. He is sovereign. So we submit ourselves to the sovereign God. We submit ourselves to your timing, God. We submit ourselves to your ways, God, because your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We submit ourselves to you in word, in thought, in deed. Lord, if there be any wicked way in us, get it out of us, God. Show us that we might confess it, God. You tell us in your word that if we confess our sins, you, you are faithful. You are just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we confess our sin today, the sin of self-righteousness, the sin of self-will, the sin of self-centeredness, the sin of self and we today right now choose to die to ourselves we say we died daily. It's not we who live, but Christ lives in us. He died for us. He gave himself up for us. So now we give ourselves up for you, God. We die daily for you, God. We will not be defensive. We will not be reactive. We will not be over over reactors, but we will be overcomers. We will not allow the enemy to see us sweat. We will not allow uh, angry people to rattle us. We will not allow difficult people to move us. We will not be swayed off your promise promises. We will walk in the peace of God no matter what's happening around us. I declare it in the name of Jesus. I declare that no matter what comes against us, you are for us and we will overcome. We will get around it. We will get by it. We will get through it because you are with us. Emmanuel, God with us. I thank you, Lord, today that those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death right now are about to see the sunrise, are about to see the blessing blessings flow, are about to see the breakthrough manifest. And so I bind every demon power that wants to distract us from the main thing. Help us, Lord, to keep the main thing the main thing. Jesus is the main thing. He has the preeminence. He is seated high above the circle of the earth at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. So help us, Lord, today. Jesus, pray. Jesus, pray. Jesus, keep praying for us, God. We need your help. We don't realize how pitiful we really are. We don't realize how powerless we are without you. We are sunk. We are finished. We are through. We can't go toe to toe with the devil in our own strength, but in you, we can overcome. In you, we can run through a troop. In you, we can leap over a wall. You've taught our hands to battle and your fingers to war. You will never leave us or forsake us. You are our forerunner. You always lead us into triumph. So we say, yes, God, we 
we say, let us decrease that you can increase. We want to go low so that you can be exalted in our lives. We want to demonstrate what it looks like to be a real follower of Christ, not a materialistic Christian, not a covetous Christian, not a greedy Christian, not a self-promotional Christian, not a me, 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 me Christian, not a build my kingdom Christian. Lord, we want to be real, authentic, genuine followers of Jesus. So, Lord, show us our waywardness, that we can confess it, that we can break agreement with the enemy, that we can find freedom from every tie that binds. Come on, there's some of you listening to me today, and you're flat out miserable. You know why you're miserable? It's not because you don't have any money. It's because you don't have enough Jesus. You know why you're miserable? It's not because you're sick. It's because you don't have a revelation that Jesus is the divine healer. You're not miserable because you're going through a divorce. You're miserable because you have haven't acknowledged Christ as the very present help in time of need or the comforter of your soul, the one who gives you beauty for ashes. We can rejoice in every circumstance. We can rejoice in every trial. When we know our God, we'll do great exploits. When we know our God, we can maintain our peace because we keep our eyes on him and he is the maintainer of our peace. He is the maintainer of our joy. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, pleasures forevermore. God, would you help us? today to get over ourselves and fix our hearts on you at another level in a new way. God, help us, Lord. We don't want to be nominal Christians. We don't want to be carnal Christians. We don't want to be uh, Christians in name only. We don't want to be Christians when, it, when it's convenient. And then when there might be some persecution, oh yeah, I don't know him. Oh Jesus, help us not to be like Peter before his encounter, but help us, Lord, to be like Paul when he got really radically saved and went around preaching the gospel in every nation of the modern world in his day. Help us, Lord, today in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Come on. These are grow up prayers this week. I don't know what, why the Lord has me praying these kinds of prayers all week long. We've been praying die to self. We've been praying grow up. We've been praying deliver us from this and rid us of that and repenting of this and repenting of that. You know, I know many of you don't like that, but guess what? God likes it and you'll like it when you see the fruit of it. <clears throat> You'll like it when you see the fruit of it. Many people don't like to pray these prayers. They just want to hear me come on here and prophesy of your blessing and prophesy your healing and prophesy your promotion. We do all that a lot. Right now, God is trying to deal with some things in us so that he can actually get us that promotion. He, he's already prepared the promotion. He wants to prepare us for the promotion. He's already prepared the blessing. He's already prepared the breakthrough. He's trying to prepare us. Do you see what's happening? When the Lord leads you into seasons of confession and repentance, repentance and surrender. There's a reason for that. We don't despise that. We don't uh, uh, resent that. We press into it and we say, yes, Lord, because that's what precedes the increase. That's what precedes the next level that we say we want, that we pray for. You know, we want to reach more people. We want to be more effective intercessors. We pray for all these things. Then God begins to deal with things in us because he wants to answer the prayer. But the only way to bring the prayer answer is to bring out of us those things that hinder what we say we want. Oh, Jesus. Amen. I'm just I'm explaining the spiritual dynamics of what's going on this week on these broadcasts. Maybe tomorrow will be different. I don't know. <laughs> these aren't my favorite prayers to pray either. I like when we get in a river of just explosive power, but guess what? The repentance precedes the explosive power. The confession precedes the breakthrough. All these things that God is doing in us this week is going to produce the peaceable fruit of righteousness in you. Amen. I want to transition into this next segment. Those of you who are have stuck around this long, some of you jumped off. Some people jumped off as soon as I started suggesting we needed to repent. They said, I don't need to repent of anything. And I'm not going to let you tell me I do. <laughs> I know. What an attitude. We're going to get into this next segment now about interfering spirits, interfering spirits, interfering spirits. The Lord showed me this in scripture. 
interfering spirits. God is so good. He's so gracious. There's nothing that you could ever do to keep him from loving you. And he loves us so much that he disciplines us. He loves us so much that he cleanses us, that he puts us, you know, under in the hot seat sometimes and convicts us of our sin. Let's deal with these interfering spirits. Let's look here in the book of Acts. I've read the book of Acts five times in a row now. I'm going to read it 10 times in a row. The Lord told me to read the book of Acts 10 times in a row. So that's what I'm doing. And I just finished this morning reading it for the fifth time. Now, look at here. This was Paul's first missionary journey. Imagine this. Really think about this. This was Paul's first missionary journey. Okay. This is, this is before he was really seasoned. This is before he had done any miracles at all. This is his first time out. I remember my first missionary journey to Nicaragua. There was so much witchcraft and so much warfare. I wanted to go home. I remember sitting under a tree. I went away from the group and sat under a tree. There was so much witchcraft and so much warfare. I mean, I was trying to figure out how can I get out of Dodge? How can I get back home? I had 14 days left before the journey ended, and I didn't think I could make it another hour. This was Paul's first missionary journey. He went out with Barnabas, sent by the Holy Spirit. And if you look down here, they were going to see the governor. See, Paul was before kings. Paul was before governors. And this was the first time he was before a governor. His name was Sergius Paulus. He was an intelligent man. And the governor had invited uh, Barnabas and Saul his name was still Saul then, uh, he wanted to hear the word of God, okay? This, this governor wanted to hear the gospel. What an invitation. What if you got invited to the governor's mansion in your state or the governor uh, in your district, wherever you are in the world? What if you got invited to the governor's house to share the gospel? What an opportunity. I'm just trying to set the scene here. I'm trying to show you something here. And then we see in verse eight, but Elimus, the sorcerer, as his name means in Greek, interfered, Alemus the sorcerer, interfered and urged the governor to pay no attention to what Paul and Saul, Barnabas and Saul said. He was trying to keep the governor from believing. Here's the sorcerer interfering. Here's the witchcraft interfering with the mission. Here's the divination interfering with the mission. Here's the obstacle trying to stand in the way of Paul and what he was called to do. This is an interfering demon. And you have encountered interfering demons in your life. I'm guaranteeing you that some of your, some of you, some of your issue is an interfering spirit. What does it mean to interfere? It means to interpose in a way that hinders or impedes. It means to come into collision or be in opposition. It means to act reciprocally so as to, so as to diminish or otherwise affect something. Some of you, the reason why you haven't reached your divine connection is because of an interfering demon. See, this was a divine connection for the governor. Paul and Silas, it was a divine connection for the governor, who, by the way, after Paul dealt with the interfering demon, the governor got saved. So what does that tell you? Interfering demons can rise, but you can find them. You can make them flee. You can overcome them and you can still complete your mission. Whatever God's called you to do, whatever God wants you to have, no matter what interfering demon wants to come on the scene, you can deal with it. You have authority in the name of Jesus to deal with the interfering demons. Look what Paul did here just quickly. Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? He was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he looked the sorcerer in the eye. In other words, he faced down that witchcraft. He faced down that interfering spirit. Then he said, you son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, of enemy of all that is good. Will you ever stop perverting the true ways of the Lord? Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment up on you, and you will be struck blind. You will not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began groping and 
around and begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. When the governor saw what happened, he became a believer for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. What did Paul do? He dealt with the interfering spirit head on directly. He didn't go complain. Oh, well, Elimus won't let me preach the gospel to the governor. That was my big opportunity. I could have got him saved and that would have been credited to my account in heaven. And this Elimus just wouldn't get out of the way. No, but that's what we do. Many times we complain. There's an interfering demon that comes and we complain. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, they won't call me back. Oh, I, I just, uh, my tire blew out. Now I don't have enough money to do this or I don't have enough money to do that. I can't get to this new job or whatever. There's interfering demons that are going to come. The question is, are you going to look that demon in the eye and make it go? Or are you going to feel sorry for yourself and forfeit your, 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 your prize, your promotion, your blessing? I know you guys well enough to know that you're not going to put up with it anymore. Now that you see it, you're going to take authority over it. I know you. You're warriors. I'm proud of you. You're overcomers. I know you. I know something about you. You're going to deal with this interfering spirit, and you're going to deal with it right now today. We're going to do this together. Are you ready? <clears throat> So, Father, the name of Jesus, we repent for any way in which we have tolerated interfering demons. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for putting up with interfering spirits that hamper our forward moving progress, that hinder the assignment that you've given us. Forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from the apathy. Cleanse us from the frustration. Cleanse us from the aggravation, the reactive spirits. Instead of responding, we've reacted so many times. Forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you've given us authority. And by that name, we bind every interfering spirit coming against our life in Jesus' name. We bind every hampering spirit, every hindering spirit, every spirit that has sought to impede our progress, inhibit our blessing. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We break your powers in Jesus' name. I speak to every intruding, obstructing spirit, and I command you to flee far from us now in the name of Jesus. I speak to every demon power trying to bring conflict, distraction, commotion, frustration, in the name of Jesus, we command you to be bound and to flee from us seven ways in the name of Jesus. I speak to every spirit bringing inconvenience, interloping, intermittent, interposing, and we break your powers. We put a cease and desist order on interfering spirits in the name of Jesus. Every demon trying to stop us, oppose us, suspend us, tamper with our breakthrough. We break your powers and we command you to go. We command you to flee. We command you to back up and back off. You thwarting demons, you troublemaking spirits, we take authority over you and we strip you of your power in our lives. We will not come into agreement with the work of busybody demons, but we will stand firm on the promises of God, which are yes and amen. I thank you, Lord, that every spirit spirit that tries to hold us up, hang us up, mix, mix us up, or, or step in the way of our breakthrough, poke its nose into our business. We command you to get out of our presence, get out of our sight, get out of our way in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that we will step into the divine connections. We will step into the new glory. We will step into the next breakthrough. We will step into these things that you have prepared for us and for which you have prepared us in Jesus name. We give you all the glory because there's no other God like you, no other God who gives us authority on the earth to occupy till you come. No other God God, no other God, no other God, every other God is an idol. And we magnify you when the warfare comes, we're going to magnify you. When the delays come, we're going to magnify you. When the frustration comes, we're going to magnify you. When the sickness comes, we're going to magnify you. When the throat trouble comes, we're going to magnify you. Come on. We're going to magnify you. When the threat of divorce comes, we're going to magnify you. When the temptation comes, we're going to magnify you. Whatever comes, we're going to 
going to magnify you because you are our God, our King, our Lord, our Master, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Healer, our Provider, our Standby, our Intercessor. You are our everything and we submit ourselves to you. We resist the interfering spirit and we declare it has fled in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I said it has fled. Did you feel it go? Did you sense the authority? Did you understand the dynamics of what was happening? Yeah, that's not a one and done prayer right there. You've going to have to, every time you discern an interfering demon, you have to take authority over it. That's what Paul did. He discerned it. He saw it. He looked the witch in the eye. He dealt with the witchcraft. He broke through the barriers. He overcame the obstacles and he completed his mission. You have a mission in Christ. Some of you, your mothers, your mission is to raise your kid. Others of you, your business owners or your managers and companies, you know, that's your, that's what God has given you to steward. You all, no matter how old you are or how young you are or what your gifts and talents are, God has given you something to steward and you want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. God doesn't take kindly to excuses. He loves you, but he doesn't put up with the excuses. Amen. He doesn't, he, we can't just talk him out of his will. Amen. We must submit to it. We can't talk him out of it. He's going to have his way. We might as well get on board with him. We might as well submit to him because he has such a good plan and a good purpose and a high calling and a destiny. He has so many good things in store. He has so many opportunities for you. He has so much joy and peace and love to shed abroad in your heart. He wants to do for you things you haven't even seen or imagined or even ever thought of. He's going to surprise you with wonderful blessings and presence and understanding and revelation. We just have to get on his side and we do need to do what the word says. We do need to die daily. We do need to pick up our cross and follow him. We do need to try to continually grow and change and and yield to his spirit when he puts his finger on a thing he wants to deal with so that we can fulfill our high call. And one thing I know about you all, you're sold out. You are on fire. You are ready to go to the battle line. One thing I know about you, that's three things I know about you. You know what I know about you? You are you are loyal to the Lord. You love him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. You are ready to, to follow him wherever he leads you. And sometimes our flesh wants to talk us out of it. But that's why we're going to crucify it. Because we're going to live in the best life God has for us. I want everything Jesus died to give me. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, isn't God good? Aren't you grateful? Aren't you glad that he saved you? Come on, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a brighter day. Listen, all hell can be breaking loose around you. Doesn't mean you still can't have joy. Doesn't mean you still can't have peace. Doesn't mean that you you can't, can't be happy. Amen. God is good. All the time. I'm so proud of all of you stuck around. Share this with somebody, guys. In Jesus' name. Remember, too, that today's broadcast is brought to you by the End Times Watchmen, the Prophetic Intercessor's Guide to Watching and Praying Through the Last Days. There's a print version, there's a Kindle version, there's an audiobook. I read it myself. The audiobook is also number one. The audiobook, I just lost Instagram. It just cut right out. The audiobook is number one as well. I've never had a number one audiobook before. So that's a new thing for me. God wants to do new things in your life. I read it myself, painstakingly read it for you. We worked so hard on getting that out for you to make sure that it came out at the same time as the Kindle and the paperback version. Go get your copy on Amazon. The end times. Watchmen, send in your bonuses, send in the receipt, screenshot it to Jennifer LeClaire dot org slash end times watchman screenshot that receipt and send it on over to us so we can get you all these bonuses that i prepared especially for you amen guys if you want to uh, you want to remember that saturday is the meteor prophetic update go to jenniferleclair.org slash events and you can sign up for the meteor prophetic update Better slash events. Sign up for the mid-year prophetic update. I'm gonna we're gonna worship, 
We're going to have, uh, if you're in South Florida, come on over. I'm going to be sharing with you some prophetic insights, where we are, where what I'm seeing next, how we should prepare. And you can uh, sign up for that. It will not be streamed online uh, anywhere except my private server. In other words, it's not going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be on Facebook. It's not going to be anywhere except on my private server. So please go sign up for that. We'll send you the link so that you can watch that. It'll be available for about a week or so. So please don't wait too long. Don't wait a year. We're going to take it down after about a week. This is an exclusive, limited opportunity. It's free to register. JenniferLeClaire.org slash events. Guys, if you're in South Florida, remember our worship circles on Tuesday nights. Our worship circles on Tuesday nights. If you just love to worship, you want to have real life conversations and hang out with believers who love the Lord. Come on over to Awakening House of Prayer on Tuesday nights. Wednesday nights is Spanish worship and our midweek Bible study. Check that out. Guys, if you want to support this ministry, if this is blessing you, if this is helping you, consider sowing a seed every once in a while. We are a donation-driven ministry, and we put out about 90%. Everything, about 90% of everything we put out is free to you, but it does cost to produce. So please do consider sowing a seed every once in a while. I'm going to spend the next 15 seconds telling you how you can sow if you choose to. Then we're going to hang out and talk for a minute. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. You can sow a seed there. You can become a partner there. You know, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And one thing I've learned is giving, tithing, sowing is insurance against inflation. You know, too many people, inflation comes and the first thing they cut back on is giving to God. Let me just tell you, that's a huge mistake. When inflation comes, the best investment that you can make is into the kingdom where moths don't don't uh, don't decay and where thieves don't break in and steal. Amen. You can use the te- uh, text word. You can use the text to t- text to give text the word pray the seven five four seven zero one two one six one. You can use the PayPal PayPal dot me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the cash app. Cash app is dollar sign prophetic books. Uh, and it's all there for you. I see this every time. I saw it in 2001 with the dot-com bubble crashed. I saw it in 2008 when the uh, Great Recession came. And the first thing people do is cut. They don't cut back their Netflix. This is what I've seen. I'm not saying that you're like this. I'm saying in general what I've seen is when the, when inflation comes or a recession comes, they don't cut the Netflix off. They don't cut the Hulu off. They don't cut off their, you know, their, uh, they, they still go out to the movies, but they cut back on giving to God. And then they wonder why they struggle. So don't be that person. Always give God first, 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 first. Seek first the kingdom. Give God the first fruits, always. And that's an insurance against inflation. It's an insurance against recession. All 2001, 2008. Every time there's been an economic blip, I've ended up being more prosperous during that time than ever. And you can too. The, 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 the way to do that, the way to do that is to keep putting God first, not just in your giving, but in your time, in your prayer life and all the way around. Because I see so many people, so many people, they'll cancel a, a, a Christian course, but they'll keep their Netflix. And it makes no sense to me. Because they're choosing entertainment over uh, education in God's kingdom. It makes no sense to me. But I know that you all aren't like that. But you might need to teach your friends that. You need to teach your friends that. I, what I know about you is that, you know, you are you all are very generous and you understand stewardship. And God's doing great things in your lives. And you hit financial snags sometimes, but God delivers you through it. But you need to teach some of your friends. You need to teach your children that. You need to teach your children. See, I got I got saved in the middle of an economic crisis. And so, you know, I learned this firsthand, you know. So anyway, but Father, I thank you for the generosity of our uh, followers and how you've uh, set them up for success. I just pray that you prosper them and uh, that you give them ideas for increase and that seeds from past seasons will uh, bring a harvest in the season that they need it the most. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for blessing this offering in the name of Jesus and multiplying it back to the givers in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen.
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And Father, agree with me with this prayer, would you? I just lift up Awakening House of Prayer, and I ask you, Lord, to bring us the new building that we need. Order our steps to the new building at the right time, God, that will handle the overflow of the people who are coming. Lord, bring us the right worship leaders, the right musicians, the right intercessors, the right members, God. Bring us, Lord, the right resources. Lord, provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus as we set out to expand with this prayer and worship movement in the nations. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hello, Valerie. God bless you. We do have a good bit of time left on our lease, but it takes a long time to find buildings, so we're believing for that. Amen. Thank you for coming into agreement with me on that. I appreciate that. Hello, Julia Shaw. Favor. My voice is getting a little bit better. Uh, but please do keep praying for my throat. It's just a spiritual attack. It's ridiculous. But we're not going to let it stop us. We're going to keep pressing. Hello, Charlie. God bless you. Where's my Awakening Prayer Hubs leaders? Guys, if you are, are concerned about souls, would you please go sign up for Awakening Nations? Awakeningprayers.com slash nations. There's no cost associated with being part of this at all. It's a 31-day prayer evangelism campaign, and we are going after souls. We're contending for souls. I have a plan to, with five minutes a day, we can pray for seven, five prayer points for seven nations for 31 days and pray for every soul in the world that needs to be saved. For five minutes a day, can you give five minutes a day of prayer? Like, well, I'm not an intercessor. You don't have to be an intercessor. Five minutes a day. Five minutes a day. I've got a plan. Now, you can pray longer than five minutes a day. But would you please, if you care at all about souls, I'm shocked at how few people are signing up for this. Actually, I shouldn't be, but I, my, it grieves my heart. It's free to sign up. It's no skin off your nose. We have to begin to pray. I know that all you all, because you're listening to me and you're on my prayer call, I know all, all you are going to sign up. But generally speaking, we put out an email on it. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Nobody cares about souls. I mean, it, it really, I, I, I'm like, literally, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So now, if I said, let's pray 31 days for breakthrough, you'd have 5,000 people that would have signed up for that. But I'm so grateful that you all are the real deal. And I know you're going to sign up for this five minutes a day. There's no cost to you, but five minutes a day. And I'm going to send you a daily email. It starts in a few weeks. We've got time to sign up. But what I do know is about all of us is if we don't sign up for something right away, we forget and then we don't do it. So check it out. Awakeningprayerhubs.com slash nations. Somebody prayed and that's how you got saved. You got family members in your, uh, in your life and friends that aren't saved. As we pray for these people in these nations, I believe God's raising up people to pray for our family and our friends. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God is good all the time. All the time, God. So I expect to see this doubled because I know some of you are just hearing about this. There's 750 of you on YouTube and Facebook alone. I'm expecting there to be a couple thousand by the end of the day because I know you're all going to go sign up for that. Amen. Hello, Houston, Texas. God bless you. John Stafford. God bless you. The souls should be top priority, Texie. That's right. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Alicia. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> where do we go to sign up for that? Can someone please let her know where we go to sign up for that? So I can preserve my voice. Five minutes. Yeah, people take showers longer than that. Hey, you can do it in the shower. That makes it easy.
Thank you, Linda Baker. Rhonda says, my son Joshua had favor of God in school and made the team. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hello, Philadelphia. Yes, if there's ever been a time we need to pray for souls, it's now. Yes, David Hicks, amen. You're correct. We just signed up from Turkey to pray for all the lost souls. Amen. Judy Murdy said she got a $7,000 yearly raise from partnering with this ministry. Well, praise God. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw your president there in Colombia. I'm sorry about that. All right, guys, my voice is starting to fade out, so I'm going to hop off. Love you guys. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Please do pray for my throat. And this attack will have to bow in Jesus' name. Sometimes spiritual warfare is just outlasting the devil. Remember that. God bless you. Have a breakthrough day.